This is Ibo Area TV. We like to look at something that is very important. We need to speak up before things get out of hand. This one was reported by Brother Machi Pius Igwe. He titled it, How Did We Get Here? He wrote, I was coming back from Obunoka this morning. That was on the August 8, 2018. He said, it was precisely at popular Abakaliki Street Junction. He saw men of the Nigerian police round up some guys with bags, phones, laptops, and tabs, and was ordering them to switch on, open files of their laptops and phones under the sun for such. He said, I was uneasy at this act of violation of human rights. I wanted to walk up us like every other Nigeria would do, but some instinct in me urged me to make inquiries, so I mustered the courage to ask the police officer if it is normal and right to order citizens to open their phones, laptops, tabs along the road. He became furious and ordered me to come down from the keke. We reasoned together. He tried their intimidating antics, but I disagreed and was firm with my reasons. At last, they bowed to the superior opinion and released the boys they have already arrested and detained in their vehicle and also let the ones they are searching go free. By grace of God, I'm happy they let those guys go free. But I have been thinking and asking aloud. Is it right for the Nigerian police to order a Nigerian citizen to switch on his phone, laptops and tabs for a tour of search? Is it right? Isn't that a human rights violation? Please, we'd like to hear your opinion on this. Of a lot of times, people's rights are being abused and nothing happens. Now, imagine this guy did not step to this location. What would have happened? The other time, I was in a police station somewhere. Some guys were brought into that police station. I will not mention the police station. But some guys were brought into the police station. You know what happened? They were quickly asked to, uh, you know, before you, you've been thrown in the cell, they will ask you to deliver certain things. They will register all your stops. And I managed to hear why they were arrested. There was no reason for the arrest. Just that they were moving and the police saw them and felt these people could be criminals and just arrested them. If not for the intervention of the DCO, yes. The DCO came in and uh, they draw his attention to what has happened and he said, why must these guys be arrested? If not for the intervention of that DPO and some other people that were called, these guys will just slip in that cell and probably, who knows, they will be charged for what I don't know. At times, the police collect money to free them. That's how some of these policemen make money here. So, Nigerians need to speak up. This violation of human rights must stop. Meanwhile, uh, we need to add that there are good policemen, there are good cops. Yeah, just like the DCO. So we must not fail to acknowledge this while we'll criticize some of the actions of the policemen. Over 6,000 Nigerians under crime investigation in South Africa, says High Commissioner. Nigeria's High Commissioner to South Africa, Ambassador Kabe Bala, says over 6,000 Nigerians are being investigated for various crimes in the country. He revealed this while speaking to Channel's television at his office. The envoy who explained that the crimes range from drug-related offenses to murder, fraud, and armed robbery noted that the statistics were from the South African Police Service. He said, we have to look at it from a proper perspective so that we don't tilt the balance and then we overlook the fact that some of our nationals engage in things that are not legal here so we have 6089 of them having cases that are being concluded or investigated and some of them in prison we have them he said the diplomat however explained that the accused persons whether nigerians or other nationals have the right to a fair trial before being convicted if guilty in line with the laws. His remark follows a meeting of the heads of Nigeria's two missions in South Africa in Pretoria on the country's crime statistics and as it's related to Nigerian citizens. This is so sad. Nigerians, please, let's do legitimate things anywhere we find ourselves. Let's not be mentioned with evil. 
There are some other good business that you can do. There are so many good internet business that you can do. It is not until you're involving anything criminal. Those involving drugs, stop pushing drugs. You go to countries and you realize this thing is not a legal business. The law does not permit it. Leave it. You must not make money the wrong way. Please, do the right things and stop painting other people in bad light. Yes, what we do affects other Nigerians doing businesses abroad or international businesses. Well, 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 I can't wait to see this happen. Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano has said the construction of a Millennium City will soon begin in the state. He announced it at the opening of the Oka Millennium City uh, built by MP Infrastructure Limited. Uh, represented at the occasion by the Secretary of the State Government, SSG Professor Sulu Chukudobelo, the governor said the project would take off in four months' time. According to him, Anambra will provide necessary infrastructure to the city, which will compare with similar projects in Abuja, Lagos, and developed countries of the world. He commended uh, MP Infrastructure for working in line with the state's projection to meet the time agreed in the project's memorandum of understanding. This is good, trying to have um, a millennial city, but I don't think um, we should be looking at Lagos and Abuja, we should look beyond them. Yes, Nigeria is not yet developed the way it ought to be. So when you want to meet up, don't don't use any state in Nigeria. No, don't use Lagos. Lagos is not well planned. When you want to look at development, I believe you governors go outside. The governors, they see how uh, overseas countries looks like. That is how we want them to fix our place. The model we want is not in Nigeria. When you say... It will look like Lagos. I see limitations. That is not what I want to see. I want to see something beyond Lagos. Rwanda has one of the best cities in the world. Despite that Rwanda came out from war. But still, development came to Rwanda. Things changed quickly and drastically. Governor of Imo State, Emeka Ihedioha, appoints Kan Wanko as head on sports. Former Arsenal player Kano Wangwa has been appointed senior special assistant on sports to the Imo State Governor Emeka Ihedioha. This is contained in a statement disclosed by Izuchuku Akwarando, new media aide to the governor. The statement reads The governor Emeka Ihedioha received one of the country's football legends, Kano Wangwa, at the government house of Wari on August 14, 2019. Papilo, as fondly called by his fans, came to present his most recent CAF award, which was given to him at the just concluded Nations Cup in Egypt to the sports loving governor of Imo State. The star also presented a branded jersey to the governor. The governor, while welcoming the former Super Eagles gold poacher, announced Kano Mwankwa as his senior special assistant on sports. Wow, congrats, a Papilo. Oh, wow, we like this, we like this. Yeah, thank you, Emeka Ihedioha, for this appointment. Nollywood actor Apama Ebewe shows off his new house. Wow, D.K. Osinanshi, popularly known as Apama Ebewe, has completed the building of his house. The Nollywood actor and comedian took to Instagram to share a photo of his new home and wrote, this is Apamanoli Castle. They said I am a very base. I'm too ebotic. I'm not funny. I'm not in Lagos. But Grace has found me here in Oweri. Your location no matter. What matters is God you serve. And to my wife, a testy and spicy, who encouraged me. Wow. You see, there is something I like so much. Yes, somebody said I sang. I was a musician. I'm an Hollywood actor. I did this, I did that. Our people used to say, Koke keje shalami, keri boot here. You're talking about you went to the army. Where is your boots at the end of the day? You see, something that is so important, and I like so many Igbos that they are doing this, this particular thing. You need to have a good house. Yes, you made money in sports. You made money in uh, various uh, calls of life, businesses. 
But if you don't have a good house, it, it's a worrisome situation. Couple takes pre-wedding photos at River Niger Bridge on Asia. Oh, that's a wonderful feat. A beautiful couple from eastern part of Nigeria causes a stare on the internet after they share an adorable pre-wedding photo smiling happily at the popular Niger Bridge in Onisha, a whole different level. The couple who decided to take the outdoor concept of a pre-wedding photo to a whole different level making them the first couples to strike a pose at the Onisha Bridge. Wow man, you got to work with your own yeah people get to babish this is our own water the couple who seem to be likely in their 30s wore the same attire a cream gold pant and navy blue suit for the handsome man while the lady wore the same color pattern dress and a fitted blazer to complement her hair and shoes there were pictures smiling sheepishly to the camera as they strike a beautiful pose for their pre-wedding photos the groom wanted the photos to be symbolic and different and also to be able to enjoy the moment with his lady, not minding the location where the bridge was. Congratulations to the new couple. What are your thoughts on this? Please, we would like you to kindly leave your comment. This is wow for me at Ibo Area TV. Wow, I love this. Yeah, we also have waters where you can do it. It's not until you get to babish your lucky. Wow. Thanks for watching Ebo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the bell icon. Like our Facebook page. Join our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Bye for now.